Man, I can't believe I'm doing this in Christmas Eve. There might be a lot of background noises because I'm recording in a really unprofessional environment. So please bear with me, okay? Now let's proceed to the video. The most wonderful time of the year. Christmas. Christmas is the time of stories, gifts, fun, joy, and a lot of other things. One of the most important of them being change. Because you know, it's New Year and that's when people take all the New Year resolutions. But yeah, anyway, one such Christmas changed my perspective of the outside world. You could say I became a new man. And so today, I'll tell you all about the Christmas that changed my life. It starts like this. So I was sitting in class, completely bored. Bored out of my mind, just staring out the window, daydreaming, everything, not even listening to a single word the teacher said. We all have those days. That's when one of my classmates, who was out of class for so, some reason, rushes in and calls for my name. Now this classmate is a studious guy, so anytime he calls me, I'm just expecting I was being summoned by a teacher. That's what you would expect too, right? But as it turns out, what I guessed was true. I was being summoned by a teacher. In fact, I was being summoned by one of the most scariest teachers of our school, the English teacher. And she was summoning me to the dubbing room. Now, this was happening a few weeks before Christmas, so it's easy to assume that this had something to do with the Christmas play. So I went all in and rushed straight to the dubbing room. I was being called to voice a character of a chef named Humpty, an evil chef to be precise. So I get the script, I read through it, and I go, yeah I can do that, go in front of the mic, starts reading the script. Now, in front of the mic, I just read the script. And so, naturally, the teacher says, not enough, and tries to send me back to class. I just could not give up because I did not want to go back to class. So I asked for one last try. And this time, I gave it my everything. I basically acted in front of the mic, and I guess, think I impressed her a little too much because she was ready to take away the kid who was already cast for the role of the chef and instead put me in. I think the kid made a fuss because she had to write in a whole new different role and add the kid in. Now, the second best part about this play is that my best friend was in this play too. Now this was happening in 11th grade and I was pretty bummed about the fact that my best friend wasn't with me, wasn't in the same class because he took a different course and I took a different course, but we were still best friends, right? But finding out that he was in the play with me, I guess that was more than enough for 11th grade Tomo to get excited. Now, my best friend was the villain of the play. Yes, he was the main villain. And me, the evil chef, was his lackey. Now, you will understand the dynamics of the play once, he, once I read you the script. A briefer version of the script. Now, although I was the villain's lackey, I only had one scene with my best friend. Yes, the scene where he bribes me while I was stealing the groceries from an orphanage. Yeah, I was a terrible guy, but whatever, at least I got a scene with my best friend.
Now, the third fun part about the play was this little kid. You remember the friend I told you about, right? The one who came to class to summon me to the dubbing room? Yeah, him. Well, the goofy part was that his whole family was in the play. Well, excluding his parents. So, he was in the play, his little sister was in the play, and his even younger brother. And this little kid, this brother of his, was a problem child. I think he was a problem child of the family too, because he became the problem child of the play. Well, not in front of the teachers, because the teachers loved him. And the girls too, because he was nice to the girls. It's just that guys, he bullies every single one of us. Biting, pinching, hitting everyone who walks too close to him. Now, this little kid was playing the part of a goat. A goat who topples every plan this evil chef makes. Now there was a scene in the end where I had to trip over this goat and fall down at the court. Again, it will make sense once I tell you the script. I practiced this so much that I felt like this could be the best scene because I was ready to fall down and hurt myself. All natural acting, nothing artificial, easily trip over the goat and just fall on my back. At least that's what I picture. But at the day of the play, while they decorated the stage, they decorated the edge of the stage with brass balls. The tripping over scene was taking place nearer to the edge of the stage. So one of two things could happen. Either I trip over and fall on the kid, which would definitely break his back. Or I fall over the bottles, which would definitely kill me. I had to calculate my fall and fall exactly and fall exactly in between the goat and the bottles. This little strip of land. And trust me when I say this, it looked so unnatural because I calculated every move. That kind of ruined the whole play, at least the scene how it was in my head. Now it's time for the script reading, just as I promised. Now the brief story is about a guy who was an orphan. He was adopted by a really rich person who happened to run another orphanage. And this guy grows up, this guy, the main lead, grows up to be the heir to the orphanage. He runs it properly and really well until the rich guy's actual son comes up to reclaim it. Now so far, the adopted son is the main guy and the actual legitimate son is the villain of the story. Because by reclaiming the orphanage, he was planning on building a hotel there. Which is obviously evil because where would the children go to? Now, he can't reclaim a place which is being run properly, right? So he had to prove that the main guy was unworthy of running the orphanage. That's where I come in, the evil chef who works at the orphanage. So the evil chef already steals a lot of the groceries that is sent to the orphanage for the children. He steals them and sells them outside. The villain comes in and bribes the chef to poison all the kids in the orphanage. So I just run around poisoning people. I know Humpty is a terrible guy. But in the end, a kind benefactor of the orphanage and a lawyer who was the main guy's friend come together to bust the villain and the evil chef of course. They take him to court where the chef trips over a goat and isn't able to speak at all, ending the play with the chef and the villain in shackles. But not quite the end of the story though, because by the end, I was a new man or, or a new boy who stopped thinking about what others thought, no longer nervous to get on stage and no longer scared to do what he loves. One hell of a change and it all happened in one Christmas Eve. Well, it happened through a course of days that ended up in a Christmas Eve. But yeah, you get the point. 
that's about it. The end.